Hello. What's up, Facebook peeps in the Art of Powerful Alignment? I am here in my hotel room in Germany. I'm just going to give a couple minutes for people to come on on my live q and A. I I wanted to serve you guys with uh, some answers regarding uh, getting yourself aligned, specifically in forms of relationship with others and particularly in relationship with self. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually here at the Con Park Hotel in Bad Nauheim, Germany. So I wanted to give a moment to uh, peeps to come on board and uh, have some Q&A regarding this very, very interesting and important topic of conversation. Let me know where you are signing in from. Let me know where you are tuning in from. And if you have any questions, I uh, had a beautiful question from uh, Jesse Nicholson, who um, who's in the group, The Art of Powerful Alignment. And I wanted to give a shout out to her. She's living in Vancouver. And I met her for the first time a couple weeks ago in a live public talk. So she was here. Hey, Rita. What's up? What time is it over there? I bet you it's like super duper early in the morning. It's like nighttime about to get to bed here. Rita, it is great. Oh, I've got this weird little hair sticking up there. Okay. So anyway, sorry, I'm vain. I have to, uh, I got to do that. So I um, wanted to talk about this concept of relationships and getting yourself powerfully aligned with relationships. Um, you could be going through a breakup. Uh Jesse's question regarding the pain of a recent separation that she's going through. And I just wanted to start off by telling you how very common this is. I've been through, yeah, you're an early riser. Hopefully you're going to do your morning rituals, darling. Um, it is, it is probably one of the most painful experiences of life is going through a breakup. Sometimes I would say it's even more difficult than the death, like grieving the death of somebody, um, because I've worked with people um, who've, who've, who've lost loved ones, and I'm working with people who are going through breakups and that limbo state. And the shitty part about the limbo state is that they're still around, and so you're constantly reminded you see that, you know, you have the same social circle, you have the same friends, you, um, you know, friends, especially with a divorce, there's like this divide that'll happen. It's either his side or her side, um, you know, and obviously in, in, in uh, different sex couples, I don't want to say his, her, you know what I mean? This goes to everybody. It's not just uh, um, heterosexual um, couples and stuff like that. So it's so difficult. It is probably one of the most traumatic experiences that um, most of my clients have had to go through because it's it's every single fear and every single um, darkness that we feel about ourselves becomes exposed. And Jesse's question was, what is it that I can do to, to, to curb the pain? And I'm here to tell you that I've been through it and I've gone through it many times and it is horrific, the feelings, because what happens, especially if you have this person on a huge pedestal, is you're getting withdrawal symptoms, much like um, the symptoms, uh, like withdrawal of, of, of a drug. And so you're going through like a detox and the pain is actually becomes physical. I remember experiencing this physical pain of the chest pains that I wanted to just get rid of. You want to do whatever it is to get rid of it. And it's kind of like somebody is sitting on your chest. It's like <sighs> difficulty breathing. And so people come in this state of absolute despair, wanting that pain to go away. And I can honestly tell you that there is a way out of this and the way out of it is through and trying to curb the pain by making amends and trying to fix the problem often isn't isn't the answer the answer for you jesse is to use this as an opportunity to step up your game in other words you're going to want to look at your life and you're going to want to see 
and, and many of you might not have actually gotten over a heartbreak. So many of you that I'm speaking to right now might still be in a situation where you're either in this limbo, you don't know which way to go, or you've actually made that move and you're experiencing such tremendous pain. Um, the answer to all of it is to step up, is to actually really find out who you are using this pain and be able to say six months from now, you can look back and say, I've learned new skills. I've, I've gotten um, training in some sort of, of uh, art, some sort of science, some sort of personal betterment that leaves you in a better place than you were six months ago. Sitting around waiting for the pain to go away is probably the worst thing you're going to do because what will happen is you're going to start to want to numb that pain because it's so disgustingly painful. And us human beings are not used to knowing how to process emotions. So what we do is we try to sedate and numb. And so we'll use alcohol, we'll use tobacco, we'll use drugs, we'll use other relationships. We, you know, what I did when I went through my divorce was I, I didn't use drugs and alcohol and stuff like that. That wasn't my jam. My jam was re other relationships. So I would find, you know, many different partners and I would try to numb myself using um, those, those, you know, by any means necessary in, in the realm of relationships with other women. Uh, because the pain of being by myself and, and the pain of facing that failure, facing the I'm not good enough, facing the will, I, I, will ever, anyone ever love me again, um, was so damn painful that I really couldn't bear it. It was it was unbelievably uh, uh, intolerable. And what I did that got me through it was I took a course in um, it's it's kind of a chiropractic uh, uh, chiropractic course of specialty in wellness sciences and 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 uh, stress. So I became an expert in lifestyle stress and, and uh, lifestyle and stress management. And why I did that was because I wanted to look back and say one year after my divorce, two years after my divorce, that I was a greater human being because of the mentorship that I got than I was while I was in that situation. You're going to have a lot of time on your free hands. So free time on your hands, excuse me. And so this is really critical for you to go in there and use that time to actually expand who you are, expand who you're being, because um, your brain is plastic. There's a plat not plastic, but there's plasticity. It's changeable. And we can, when we take trauma and tragic events and we use those events to add more neuron, neuronal connections, neural pathways, then we actually change our lives. You change your brain, you change your thinking, and you change your beliefs, leaving you much greater of a human being six months from now, one year from now. It's usually those breakups that are wake-up calls. The breakup is the wake-up for you that you knew, Jesse, that you knew 100% that you needed some sort of shifting. And so either we do it out of our own volition or we attract tragic events to humble us, to bring us back to our basics, to then discover who it is that we are, to find out what our true values are, not values and, and, and you know, expectations of beliefs from other people, but what they are for us. So what do you do, Jesse? What you do is you get yourself out of every single environment of influence from other people, especially friends and family, who mean very well, who will have all of your best interests at heart, but they will be coming slanted from their values and their agenda for you. So that might not be exactly what's true for you. What I did was I went back into a, you know, into myself. I went to understand what my values are. I asked the questions, what is it that's most meaningful to me? What makes time stand still for me? What is it that I, um, you know, that I 
is my superpower that I know that I'm good at that, that my friends will say that is my, my, my genius, the thing I love most about myself. And for me, it was teaching. It always comes back to teaching every single time. Um, my highest value is teaching. And so what I discovered was when I went back and I was retreating from that pain of a breakup, the answer for me was to use that pain and to express it in my highest values. What is that for you? Music. Is it in teaching? Is it in learning? What is it that you love to learn? So what you're going to do, Jesse, is you're going to put that into your schedule. You're going to put the learning. You're going to put the music. You're going to put all of these things that are kind of like you plugging into your source. You plug into that source and all of a sudden you get tapped into something greater than you. That's where we become resourceful. Because right now you're going to be battling with emotions of bipolarity. Oh my God, I'm so happy I'm out of this mess. Oh my God, I'm going to be miserable. Oh my God, I'm so happy I'm going to be out of this mess. Oh my God, I'm so miserable. Do right. you understand? It's basically that's how it works. And so the first thing that you want to do is to exa examine and know exactly what your values are and to create a, and declare a personal mission statement for yourself that involves you expressing to a higher level. Feel free to ask any questions, you guys. If, you, if this is resonating, please give me feedback. Let me know where you're tuning in from. For those of you, by the way, I'm going to give you the, the five shifts that are necessary for you to, to really sail through this transitional anxiety of a breakup. Um, let me know what questions you have, where you're tuning in from. Um, those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Nima Romani. Welcome to the new members of the group. Um, I'm committed now to um, showing up more and answering your questions and serving and, and, and giving you guys the goods on what it takes to get yourself aligned so that you can make an impact on other people and restore all the relationships in your life because your life is all about relationships. So I'm, I've been a chiropractor for 16 years and now I'm full time into coaching and I just do part time a little bit of chiropractic work, but I travel the world. I do workshops and I train people on how to remove all the suffering that that is created by their thinking, by their expectations, by the lack of integrity, by the lies that they're telling. Um, we all are telling lies and consider that these inauthenticities are the cause of our suffering. And once we get, and the cause of us losing our power, and once we get real, once we get connected, we tune in to that power of who we are, and then we can express ourselves. There was a time where I was too shy and nervous and too uh, feeling um, unworthy to be able to speak in front of a camera and to share a message. I was completely feeling that unworthiness until I did these five shifts. And career transition, or like in Jesse's case, uh, sudden transition of relationship. So here's what you do. Shift number one, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to um, create a mission statement based on your values. And when you get that right, what happens is you wake up and you have purpose behind the steps, putting your feet to the floor, walking. Um, you, you start to know exactly who you are because you start living into that possibility that you created with that declaration. And that was one of the things that one of the feedback that one of my close friends gave me on, on, on a recent kind of social outing that I had last weekend, we went out on my friend's boat and he told me, he said, um, you know, out of anybody I know, you're the most laser focused. And that's what happens when you, and, and I told him it's not me because I'm different or special than you. I just, declared a mission statement, a personal mission statement. And um, I, I declared what, what I, I'm creating my life to be about. And so when I did that, when you get that right, you then can start assigning and aligning activities in your day that are in, in congruence with that vision. Like me teaching right now, right now, me speaking um, and teaching, answering questions and serving in this way is a, a form of me living according to my highest values and my mission. It's part of my mission statement. It's who I am. I feel power and I feel freedom and I feel like I'm very self-expressed when I'm, I'm doing it. 
And that's because I've made that declaration and you can too, because if you don't get that right, you will start to question yourself and look at other people and then feel jealousy all the time. Hey, hey, Dida, what's up, girl? Perfect example of, of somebody who does the work and has seen magical shifts in, in, in her life. Dida, would you share with everybody what happened when we're working together and you declared a mission statement for yourself and you align with it each and every day? This is an incredible example. I mean, I'm so proud of, of what you've accomplished. So better, you know, me speaking versus, you know, you sharing it, you know, as a real life example. So it's not just Nima full of hot air. There's actually some, 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 uh, clear cut evidence and examples when you don't get it right. This whole mission statement, um, Jesse, when you don't get it right, um, you're always going to be looking for outside people to fill what's missing inside. And did I said it finally unfolded. And my reality is from my goals. Yes. Yeah. In our private Facebook group, she's sharing about how all these amazing things are happening as a result of the declaration that she made. And that first one, that's the first major shift is that creating that mission statement. And Jesse, while you're going through this breakup or you're in this transitional anxiety, it's wise for you to start to look at some of the delusions, some of the myths, some of the stories that you've been making about mom, about dad, about the primitive relationships in, in our lives, brother, sister, mother, father, um, ex, you know, the stuff you're going through with your partner, with this breakup, is exactly stuff that you've experienced with your father, your mother. Um, these are all victim states that that you pro probably don't even aren't even aware of or conscious of. It could be a blind spot. You're running a victim story, and in your breakup, in this transitional anxiety, it becomes very clear. You see it. It's like right in your face. It's like oh my god, like these feelings are not new. So what it's doing is it's forcing you to go back and unpack them and see what is it that I, what story am I making? What should have been different from dad? Well, dad shouldn't have left me. One of my clients, basically, he's going through this feeling of transitional anxiety with his career and what feelings are going on while well, I feel, you know, unworthy, that kind of thing. Well, let's go Excuse me, I'm jet lagged like crazy. I'm gonna yawn. Whoa, I've been trying to stay awake and but uh yeah, so pardon me. Um he said, I feel unworthy. We went back, and it turns out when he was six years old, his father basically decided to up and leave. And so he had this story of unworthiness from the age of six, so that this whole transitional anxiety is like trauma re-triggered. And it's forcing us to go back and unpack it. And as we did, lo and behold, he went back and he restored a relationship with his father that he didn't have for 30 years. And now every Sunday morning, this client of mine has a standing phone call with his father every Sunday now. And it wasn't possible but before. But what we did was we he got to have that conversation with him and clear up this whole perception of unworthiness, which is plaguing him in this current reality. So clearing the resentment and regret, when you get it right, what happens is you start to regain your power because that story of I'm not enough that's coming up for you right now, it becomes washed away. And you start seeing it as kind of this little voice of your dark passenger that you learn how to manage. You learn how to manage. Yeah, it is awesome. It's such a privilege. If you don't get this part right, what ends up happening is the past becomes your future. The past is constant. Feel worthy consistently and you're constantly telling this story. And so it's, it's, it's a shame because what's available to you on the other side of doing that work is getting your power in the transition so that three months from now you are bigger in a, in, in a spiritual sense. I don't necessarily mean physically bigger. That's not necessarily the, the goal we want. You could actually become leaner. You be, you start to, you start when you clear the guilt and the shame and the resentment, towards others and towards yourself what happens is you start to feel worthy of taking care of yourself you start to feel worthy of of self-care 
and you look at yourself and you look in a mirror and you go, damn, I love, I love what I'm seeing. What would that be like for you to, to, to look in a mirror and love what you're seeing? It was one year ago when I was going through that transition of, of my ch chiropractic selling my chiropractic practice when I could look, I couldn't stand looking in a mirror. I was so riddled with guilt and remorse and regret that I would look at myself in the mirror and I would keep repeating, oh, you're unworthy. You're not good enough. You're, you're, you're a failure. I kept seeing myself as a failure and it was so painful until I really got put pedal to the metal. And so the next thing that's really critical in this breakup relationship breakdown transitional anxiety into the next level as you're stepping up is for you to take every single relationship that was broken down before this thing happened and look and see what have I been withholding? Who have I not been telling the truth to? What breakdowns have, ha have I had in my relationships that require me restoring love and making some sort of amends? And you might look and go, but these people are negative, they're toxic, they're assholes. Well, let me tell you something. I know what your life is about. Your life is not about the car you drive or the job you have or whatever. Life is about the relationships that you have. And I didn't know this until very recently because I thought that mm, I'm above it. I'm better than other people. People are stupid. I'm greater than, you know, I had was living in ego, pride and greed, which was the cause of my downfall in the first place. And when I started looking that my life is about my relationships, I went and made amends and it was very painful for me to sit down with my brother and say, hey, bro, what was it like being my bro? And him telling me, he goes, I feel like I don't have a brother. Whoa. And I asked him what, 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 it, would, what it would take for him to feel like I did. He did. And it was eating humble pie. Many people aren't prepared and aren't oh, prepared to have that conversation because it's too painful because we just can't handle criticism. We take, we take, you know, our family and friends um, feedback towards us and we make it mean that we're not good enough or we're not worthy of love. But what I had to do when I was listening to my brother tell me all of the things that he wasn't digging about me because I asked him, I was very present to holding space to him, which basically means holding space means to be aware of your own triggers and your, your personal feelings, which I was feeling rejected. I was feeling blamed. I was feeling unfairly treated. But the whole time I was feeling that I was aware of it, but I was still being a container for him to share and empty out his feelings because my goal wasn't to be right. It was to have a rich life full of connection with family and friends. So I ask you when you're resisting, I ask all my clients when they're resisting going and, and restoring with their family members, um, whether it be a brother or whether it be a father, you know, it's time to go. And, but no, I can't do that. He's this, he's an alcoholic, he's a toxic person. And would you rather be right or have a rich life? And the whole goal is to go and, and do everything that you can to get complete doesn't necessarily mean you got to be friends with that person every single day, but you don't want to be in a situation where you're afraid of going into that place, into that city, into that, you know, neighborhood, because you might bump into that person. That's a complete loss of power. And when you don't get that right, it's robbing you from actually stepping into your next relationship with power or looking in a mirror and feeling great about yourself. But on the other side of those conversations that are painful, on the other side of them are, are, is an incredible sense of fulfillment and feeling like you're aligned with yourself again, a dissolving of the guilt, dissolving of the shame, restoring love. And the whole point of this is this whole game is love, is being in, in alignment with yourself so that you can share your truth, share love with others who actually need you to play full and play the highest version of you. And so that's one critical step. And um, the last step for you in this process is to get a mentor. Do not do this alone, because if you're doing it alone and you're using your feelings as your guide, your feelings are not valid a lot of the times. They will deceive you. But to have somebody there who isn't your mother guiding you through because your mother's got an agenda, your sister's got an agenda, some of your best friends have an agenda, but to hire a mentor that will really um, have the, the highest version of you in mind and call you out on your BS 
isn't there to just support, isn't there to just kind of like say, hey, you're right, you're right, I support you. In a breakup, you'll notice that that's what you'll be called on to do. You're going to host, you know, bring, go hang out with all your friends, all your girlfriends, all your guy friends, and they'll say, oh, she was a bitch or he was an asshole. Poor you, they're there, pat you on the back. And you know what? That feels amazing temporarily. It feels awesome. But unfortunately, um, it holds you back. Seeking support holds you back. And so the highest version of you is there to transform that. So it, it is to not be supported. The highest version you, of you isn't supported in your story, but you will surround yourself with the right people that are going to call you out on your bullshit and get you to start telling the truth so that you can six months from now be a greater version of yourself. And that was probably the greatest gift that I gave myself. I invested $20,000 last year. It was insane. I was scared. I was shaking. It was beyond my capacity in that at that time. Um, but what that forced me to do was keep me in action and hold me accountable because it's up to me to do the work because nobody is here to rescue you. It's just you. But if you don't have enough skin in the game and you haven't found the right mentor to actually push you, to push you and call you out and to get you to be uncomfortable. One of my clients today, she is invested in, in my program. And um, I basically told her, I said, here's your homework because she's got anxiety and she's afraid to get into the train. She's afraid to go visit, you know, her son who lives in London. You know, she's in the outskirts of London. And her homework was to go in there and engage and actually welcome the feelings of anxiety that were holding her back from riding a train. She's isolating herself, not leaving. And so if it wasn't for the accountability and the push, which she's committed to doing tomorrow, which we're going to be checking up on her, she's going to stay small and stay shrunken. And her 40s, her 50s, her 60s, whatever, will pass her by. And she'll look back and say, I wish. But with the right mentor who's going to call you out and give you a nudge, you're going to face your fears because it's all about taking action. This whole game is about taking action. You are your worst enemy because of inaction and indecision. So by me hiring the right mentors, I got into action. I got through the paralyzing indecision. And I started doing the work and within three months, I was a completely different person. I don't, I'm unrecognizable from myself one year ago. And even six weeks ago, you know, I'm consistently evolving because I have now put coaching and mentorship as a necessary monthly expense, like my rent, because it's a mindset game. And if I'm a mindset coach, if I'm not doing the work myself, then I'm a hypocrite. I'm actually here in, um, where am I? I'm in Germany. I want to show you this. I am here in Bad Nauheim, Germany, doing, spending nine days with this beautiful soul, Byron Katie. Um, she's blowing our minds with um, the work. Um, her, her, her work is all about challenging the assumptions and beliefs, watching our thoughts and challenging them. And, and it's not, it's not what's happening to us. It's what we think about what's happening to us that creates suffering. So I'm on a mission. I know what my mission is, is to, um, to help people short, shorten their span of suffering. That's really what it is. And I do it in my own specific, unique way through the overview method and my program. And I do it by working consistently on myself as the ch charges and triggers build, because I t spend a lot of time helping people through emotional challenges and, and, and breakdowns and helping them get aligned with their lives so that they can have more powerful relationships, get the relationship that they have always dreamed of, get the career that they've always dreamed of. And I look at my life now as a function of the work that I've done. And so it's so fulfilling for me to go out and share that with other people. So hopefully that is of use to you. Are there any questions that you have? Um, Dida, thanks for jumping on. Rita, God bless. It's my, my clients. Uh, I love my clients so much. Uh, watching them transform um, into powerful human beings who have amazing relationships. I did the work myself. It was so fulfilling. I went from 
not being able to commit to a partner and just still farting around and wanting to play the field and not really uh, scared to make a jump and a leap out of my chiropractic practice. And now I look at my life and I have one of the most authentic relationships that I've ever had. It doesn't mean that we don't fight. doesn't mean that we don't argue. No, consistently we have breakdowns. And the cool part about it is by knowing the work and using the tools, these breakdowns become breakthroughs very fast and I can help other people now with them. Being, you know, the voice of a man who was divorced. If I had the coach at that time during my separation, I probably would have been able to save my marriage. Not that divorce is wrong, not that it shouldn't have happened. I'm just saying that the the person who I am now is better able to cope with the challenges that relationships bring versus the person I used to be. And so I'm inviting you. There's two, uh, I have time for two coaching clients who are not yet clients, <laughs> who are going through relationship limbo, who are stuck and who are open to having a conversation and to cutting to the truth. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm going to invite you to work with me. It might not be the right fit. In fact, 50% of the people that I speak to, I, I kind of say, no, it's not the right fit, and but I point them in the right direction. And so this is for you if you are going through a separation, if you're going through a um, should I stay or should I go type of scenario, and you really want to get power over that and to make a declaration, commit to becoming the kind of person that can have an incredible relationship either with the person you currently are with or to you know, part ways with who you're with. Some of my clients have parted ways, and then now they're setting themselves up for having incredible relationships. One of the one of the people I ha have in mind started off going through, started the program off um, in a break breakdown breakup scenario, and she restored. She told the truth, restored all sorts of. Uh, she's also going through some eating disorder problems, restored all of her relationships. Told the truth, ex husband, ex boyfriends you know, people that she's friends with. And lo and behold, her career started taking off. She got the gig. She got a signed an incredible six figure contract and manifested a relationship. But it wasn't without its challenges. She had to tell the truth. She had to become coachable. She had to be committed and she had to be resourceful. So if that's you, if you're committed, if you're coachable and you're resourceful and you don't and you're not going to want to play the victim role, reach out to me. Send me a private message and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you um, to see where you're at and what strategy we can create for you to actually, you know, have a powerful, powerfully aligned relationship with your partner to heal it or to move forward and to find, you know, the soulmate that's within you so that you can have that with with others with with another human being because it can't happen unless you get aligned within yourself are there any questions i'm going to leave a couple minutes open uh the next couple minutes if you have any questions now would be a great time i would love to be of service and help if there's any question that you have was this useful please invite somebody in this group who really needs to be hearing this and tag them in this post and i would be happy to have a conversation um but Really, please, please, please do not hesitate to reach out. If you're going through crisis, that's what this community is about. Ask questions. Um, I'm here to serve and help, um, you know, humanity dissolve suffering by removing the barriers that are blocking that letting love in. And when you do that, life becomes a magical ride. But it's not without work. And if you're willing to do it, send me a private message and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. If there are no questions, then I thank you for your participation, and I hope that this was useful for you, and I will see you tomorrow at the exact time, 9.30 p.m. Germany time, which is 12.30 p.m. Pacific time, 3.30 p.m. Um, uh, Eastern time, and I guess 5.30 a.m. in, in uh, Australia. So if that's you and you want to be part of this live broadcast, I'm happy to see you. I hope that I'm over the jet lag by then, but I uh, want to tell you uh, how grateful I am for this community and for, for Facebook, for, for, for social media, for allowing me to live my highest values each and every day. God bless you. Thank you.